it's my cute here and in this episode I'd like to show you how does the combat in walkthrough look like. Um, I'm not really sure how well will the recording go because well, it's like very exhaustive for my computer to just run six clients and if I'm going to record this game as well, well this might vary, let's say so. So let's get into the combat and I'll just try to describe you some of the basics. Uh, well, we're actually inside the Mugur dungeon, which means that like this is a very easy combat for my team. It's like the dungeon is designed for level 60, it's doable by level 50, I think. So, well, there's like nothing really too harmful, difficult in here. So this is a very, this is truly perfect place to describe some of the mechanics which walk through office, and as well, like talk to you about well my team and the characters I'm using and so on. Okay, so I'll be playing while talking. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> so this is how it looks like. So when the combat actually begins, you can choose where your characters go. Right, you can see this here. So you can like select the starting locations for each of them. Um, and now, well, uh, we move a character. Like you, you can see it right now because I'm like using another window here. But um, regardless, like you basically move your character, use the skills, and so on. This is as simple as that, uh, as far as like those basics are concerned. But there are some pretty interesting things connected. To, like, okay, so. Well, let's see how how does it work. So basically, you have the skills here laid out, right? So um, basically, the goal of the combat here, as usually, is to defeat all the foes without dying. So, but well, this will be easily accomplished, I believe, in in this case. Um, okay, I'm gonna cast this skill here. It's a bit confusing for me because, like, I'm not used to talking, playing, and recording at the same time. Um, well, but by the same token, I can actually like practice this and get better. Um, well, regardless, so here, as you can see, um, I'm moving those various characters, so they're all controlled by me, actually, which is a bit difficult to like get the grasp of, let's say. But once you do, it's like very much fun to like play the whole team of five, because you can like decide where you go and what you do every well, whatever you actually like attempts. So, and it's really fun to like add points and like uh, create all those characters. Okay, so now you'll actually see the real 10. <laughs> because before you couldn't see how, how does movement work and so on. So as you can see, um, my character has 6 movement points, it's uh, shown you here. So I'm going to move him right now. Um, I'm going to cast a spell. So each spell has like a certain range. You can see this icon of an eye which appears when I hover over the skill. So you can see it over there. I'm gonna use the skill right now. It moves me, it deals damage, so it depends basically on what character you have. Um, so the skills you use like depend on that. So this is basically it. So you have like a pool of MP, pool of pool of AP, and pool of walk for points, each 10. And depending on how you make use of them, you will um you will basically um like achieve certain goals. But now there are some advanced mechanics. For instance, if you attack your opponent from behind, your damage will increase significantly. Oh, this is the Kaflip character. So I actually have some uh, back, um, like backstab damage gear on her, which allows me to deal like um, extreme amounts of damage if I actually position myself behind the targets. So as you saw, this, this is like pretty much insane burst of damage coming from just one character. Mm. Okay. So other than that, for instance, okay, so mm, right now I'm going to play the Inutrov, so this guy is basically a treasure hunter. Uh, so um, they can actually like deal damage from quite decent distances, as well as, um, well, basically they have increased chance of obtaining loot, and then they can also cause your opponents to drop items during the combat. Which is pretty uncommon because uh, the loot is distributed after the combat um, usually. So uh, as you can see, this this guy actually can like increase the amount of items you obtain from each combat like significantly. Mm. Okay, so there is another factor which I haven't discussed yet. So as you can see, um, there are those <laughs> two icons at the left uh, top side of the screen. These are called challenges. Um, so 
each com in each fight you will have either one challenge outside of the dungeons or two challenges inside of the dungeons and depending on um depending on uh whether you complete them or not you can receive bonuses such as uh, additional experience points bonus loot and so on uh, so this can actually add up to some really nice amounts, so you can basically even triple the amount of XP you earn, I think. Mm, though there appears to be some kind of a cap on the amount of like uh, experience points you can obtain via each challenge. I'm not entirely sure about this, I actually have to ask someone. Um, but regardless... Okay, so... Um, no, this combat isn't over yet. Jesus Christ, 1 HP. <laughs> so regardless, like you can see that there are like various factors here. And depending on how tactically you play, uh, you can either like, uh, on, and on how meticulous you are, you can actually like get a lot of um, additional drops and additional experience from each combat. So well, th that would be it for like the basics. So now, once the combat is over, you can actually see what kind of loot you get. So well, since this dungeon isn't exactly the most advanced, uh, you didn't really get anything special in this case. Um, but well, like the XP isn't like stunning either, but it would have been much lower if I didn't do the challenge. Okay, so here we go. This would be the first room. So now I will actually play through the uh, all the other rooms, and then I will show you the boss fight later on. Because there's like no challenge in this dungeon whatsoever. All right, so here we go. This is the boss room of this dungeon. So as you can see the boss is right here, um, it's also important to know that when you left right click an opponent, a window pops up where you can see their stats. So there is like their doors, their lock, their resistances so that you can know what you're actually dealing with. Um, it's also very important to remember to check the challenges, so in this one I have to use all my MP on every single character and I can't cause any fire damage to my opponents. Um, so, whereas um, not causing fire damage shouldn't really be a problem for me, I don't really think I can. Um, I can actually manage not mo like not um, yeah, like doing this uh, nomad challenge because it's like with so many opponents and with quite poor um, dodge stat stats on my characters, it might be. Oh, a bit tricky to just use all the MP pool, the entire MP pool every single time. Okay, so I'm gonna close this and I'm going to just start um, fighting the monsters. Um, so I won't really be able to use uh, Faker to its full potential because, well, first of all, I don't really have um, appropriate gear on her, and then secondly, um, it's also um, the thing that I haven't really leveled her water spells fully yet. So it's like a bit difficult here with regard to that. <coughs> also I'm like taking terribly long in this in this fight to just move um, because I'm trying to talk and move at the same time which I'm apparently not really that good at. Um, well, okay so I'm gonna try to do this. Um, I'm gonna deal some more damage to this guy here. I've used my MP, yeah, so it's not it's not a big problem with this this character here. Um, okay, so now this this is the sacristan. So basically, well, there is no real uh, game plan for this particular combat because um, because like this is pretty simple for me. So I'm just going to breeze through the monsters, try to kill all of them, um, and possibly do both challenges if I can. So I will we'll see how it like turns out. Um, I could have killed this guy, Jesus. It's like really confusing for me to play without, like, when I actually have to talk and discuss every single move I make. But regardless, like, well, right now I can't really posi position behind my opponents. So I'm just going to try to, like, kill what I can with what I have already up in here. Um, it's... Okay, so as far as, like, specific mechanics of this dungeon, um, <laughs> it's a bit, like, weird, but... Uh, this boss he like throws his dang around, and when you like start your turn uh, around this dang, or when you um, enter the area of effect around it, you will actually get a slight debuff um, to your resistances. <laughs> so it's like I think this is 50% reduction, maybe a bit less. Um, no, actually it's 8% only. 
So it reduces your resistances by 8%. This is a really, really a huge deal here. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't really be worried about it at all. Uh, but well, regardless, um, it's like well, for some weaker parties, it would be a good idea to either destroy these heaps, but this, they do have like significant significant HP pool, so this isn't this isn't entirely the best idea. But uh, like to avoid standing next to them because this means that you can basically get killed pretty easily. Well, while on the other hand, those monsters don't really hit much, so they're pretty weak. Um, as you can see, they also have all of them have pretty high resistances to F. So if you were like looking for a group to do this dungeon, and uh, if you knew that well, the the team you are going to go with uh, is not entirely like. For instance, it doesn't have any high-level characters and so on. It might be a good idea to look for um, those non-F spec characters, so that you don't like um, have the obsolete uh, people in on the team. All right. So regardless, I'm actually doing it with F. I ran this dungeon at level 50 for the first time with the very same team with like much much worse gear, and I managed it somehow. It was a bit more difficult, I have to say, but. Well, regardless, I did um, did kill those. Okay, uh, did kill those monsters somehow. I didn't manage the challenges back then, but I don't think it's really relevant, is it? Okay, so I'm gonna tr just try to keep moving here, um, if possible. I think they're th these two guys are gonna get locked next turn, but it's like uh, I don't really. I'm just trying to show you how how combat in this game works. Um, so th well, this dungeon can be difficult for the characters who are like not out leveling the content here. But since I actually wanted to like uh, check how my um, how actually uh, slow my recording will be, it's like a really good dungeon to just run those tests. Okay, so I'm gonna try to kill this guy, move, jump onwards, and try to kill this guy too. It's perfect that I can actually use my MP. So depending on characters, um, well, each like each single class will use different amount of resources to deal damage. So for instance, IOPS have a possibility to use their movement points to deal additional amounts of damage in the air branch tree. Uh, you can't really see it right now, but like you have to trust me. Um, I could try to d discuss some different mechanics of the characters. So for instance, Sacrius here. Uh, you have like various options, like fire being the most like um, damage dealing branch, I believe, and um, air is like this well mobility slash single target damage slash well pretty decent melee damage as well, and F is this tanky uh, skill, like contains all those tanky skills because when you use F uh, spells, you actually gain coagulation stacks. Um, so coagulation actually allows your characters uh, allows you, actually allows the sacria to reduce the amount of damage they take next turn. It gives them some kind of a shield which reduces um, the damage uh, they're dealt. So it's pretty pretty useful thing. Okay, so I'm basically um, beginning to get rid of all the monsters. But generally speaking, if you uh, like enter dungeon for the first time, um, it's really good idea to take a close look at the monsters you're fighting before you reach the final room because once you do you have to know whether it's a good idea to focus the boss which it's not it's, it's not usually the best idea really um, and uh, whether you should for instance try to uh, deal damage to the monsters first it's generally speaking pretty decent tactic to just try to kill uh, all those monsters before you kill the boss because it's like, um, unless you have like huge amounts of damage and you outlevel the dungeon, uh, you're going to have like much more trouble with uh, a group of mobs running around. Especially that the monsters in Wokfu usually tend to have some special abilities. So it's a really good idea to look at what skills and what spells the monsters use and at their resistances too before you reach the boss room because you can't really make any mistakes uh, in the boss room uh, itself. Okay, so I'm gonna try to finish off those guys. As you can see, I'm using my Enripsa to deal damage here, which is kind of a contradiction to what I said in my tutorial to to character creation and so on. But since there's like no reason for me to heal here, because I know I won't die, I'm just trying to like um, finish this co this fight as soon as possible. Especially that um, 
especially that like um, I'm trying to do those challenges and it's like little like actually if you make one little misplay here you can actually fail a challenge like if you use a wrong spell on one character this means that you basically get rid of this 50% XP and drop bonus which um, like you don't really want to do especially that this dungeon is pretty easy for me so I'm just gonna try to focus here I'm gonna try to um, try to finish this combo without making any significant mistakes um, okay so I can't really do damage here alright so now it's um, so well as a side note what does this boss actually do is he pushes you around he spawns those dank piles he doesn't really have any like um, significant amount of damage so he isn't really a threat alone um, and well basically it's a really good idea to let this guy be until you finish everything else because as you can see his really high resistances um, and uh, he's not really much of a like danger uh, himself so yeah just let the guy live kill everything else uh, since those monsters here don't really have any special skills like apart from the boss they can only like spawn those flies uh, so it's usually a good idea not to kill the flies because the flies don't really even have any ability to lock your characters so you basically just try to finish the combat um, by killing the monsters, by killing those cows first and then it ju you just hope it will like go somehow okay so as you can see here I dropped a pouch from the monster I am actually gonna be able to collect it right now uh, so the in Inutrov can actually summon a a dreller so this kind of like I don't know boar like uh, monster which can collect uh, mons like loot during the combat like any actually any character can do that but um, well it's it would be a waste of ten for me to just walk over there I believe so this is it um, remember that those challenges actually have special descriptions so for instance um, the fire damage has to be dealt by players so this means that this does not really regard the summons it is pretty good oh, as you can see once you start hitting the boss you can actually spawn those free flies um, which aren't really um, a real threat regardless but yeah he can do that okay so I'm about to finish the fight I believe okay so there are a few ways for the Ripsa to do damage by the way which I haven't really mentioned in my previous video so first of all you can actually use unnatural remedies which will turn your healing skills into damage dealing skills uh, then you can actually use the weapons and then you'll have like two other disciplines so fire and air which also have some quite significant damage output provided that you can get appropriate gear so on the slower levels there's like this absolutely out of question oh I almost failed the challenge by the way because I wanted to use the um, I wanted to use the fire spell on Feka because Feka is my only fire damage character right now Okay, so as you can see, I used the turn here. I'm gonna use the eye up now. I think I can like finish it within like a few moves. Hmm. Hmm. So as you can see, like even though this combat, this fight isn't entirely difficult for me right now, it still requires like a lot of attention. It requires like a lot of focus because uh, you will be trying not to fail those challenges. Uh, regardless of whether you um, you're actually out leveling the dungeon or not, it's like every single time the combat is interesting because you just have to focus. You just have to like uh, try not to fail uh, those challenges, even though like th there are lots of lots of opportunities for you to do so. Okay, so I'm gonna like move the calf flip, and I think I can finish uh, with the inner truth this turn. As you can see, those resistances. Uh, resistance cases do stack but still it's like 4% so yeah who really cares right but in the many other dungeons it's actually going to be much more difficult for, for a player to just um, to just win those fights okay so the fight is over and now since this was the boss uh, there are some special items connected to killing it so you can get some uh, pretty decent sets so that for instance this dungeon 
drops uh, the equipment for the F slash fire characters, which also provides quite significant bonuses to um, to backstab damage and dodge. So this is a pretty decent set regardless. But since I didn't really... Oh, I got a belt actually, so this is a good drop. I thought this was the amulet. Um, so this dungeon also drops royal mugur mi mil mi milk, whatsoever, whatever. But those milk milks can be sold for quite decent amounts of money. So for the slower parties, this dungeon is pretty easy. It provides pretty decent drops, uh, which can be sold for significant amounts of money. And also the XP is like semi-decent if you do the challenges. So profit if you if you are patient enough to like follow every single challenge that is okay so thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video um and see you soon in another episode see you guys okay just a little side note um for those who are interested in subscribing as you can see um premium players in walk for apac because this is the asian server um get bonus loot which is here so they actually get a chance to get additional items. So as you can see, I have few characters subscribed and few unsubscribed. So those uh, who unsubscribe do not receive this uh, premium loot. Um, so here I basically lost 2kk because of, because of that. Um, but I actually gained 2kk from this one too. And also there is like bonus experience which premium pl players receive. So this is like 30% XP gained, uh, additional loot which is here. And also 30% Kamas, which is like not that relevant. But, uh, well, regardless, and you can see that the XP difference is quite high here. And also, like, I actually would like to mention the fact that there is some kind of wisdom cap. Because as you can see, despite the fact that the wisdom levels on my characters are different. So, for instance, my Enerips are here. Got as much XP as my uh, Ikaflip. And the Ikaflip has like much, much more wisdom right now. So, um, and the XP gains exactly the same. So I actually infer that, like, uh, there is some kind of wisdom cap. I would say it's like 100, maybe 150. But uh, if you do the challenges, you will reach it. And, uh, like, wisdom becomes less relevant, actually. Because what really counts then is, um, is uh, this cap. So once you reach the cap, you will get pretty much the same XP on all your characters. Okay, so, um, right, thank you for watching then, so this will be it for this episode, ciao guys, if you enjoyed watching, just please remember to subscribe to the channel, comment below the video and so on, blah blah blah.